Hi there, it's Florence here and today I'm back again with another episode of my video podcast kind of thing. Today's episode is going to be a little bit more imbalanced in that I have slightly fewer finished knitted pieces to show and slightly more new yarn to show. This isn't the case in every one of my episodes. Um, I've had a few things happen lately that have resulted in me <laughs> buying and being given a little bit more yarn than I usually get. Um, so I will be showing that and talking about my plans for it towards the end of the video. First of all though, I do have two finished objects and two pieces that I'm working on that I'm going to show you and talk a little bit about. Um, and yes, then we'll move on to looking at some new stuff and talking about some of my future knitting plans. As usual, before we get started, a little bit about what I'm wearing. We're going for two different knitted pieces today. I pretty much always wear these two together. I really like how they look. This underneath layer is the Twist Loop Top by Other Loops. I knitted it last summer. It's knitted using some old scrap drops flora that I've had for ages from a long abandoned jumper project that I should probably pick up and carry on with. It's definitely not the correct yarn for knitting a camisole, um, but I still like this a lot because I do tend to wear it as an underneath layer in the winter rather than a piece that I especially reach for in hotter weather. Drops flora is I think 60% or 70% wool and the rest is alpaca, so I don't like alpaca as much for hot weather and it's definitely not a material that I enjoy as much as the camisoles that I've made using the knitting for olive merino. I find that's much more comfortable in hot weather. Talking of the knitting for olive merino, um, the outer layer is something that I've also spoken quite a lot about on this podcast in the past, I think. This is the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. It's a lovely pattern that I've followed a couple of times, and this time it's made in the Knitting for Olive Merino and the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. The colours, I believe, are Marzipan and Putty for the Merino and Mohair, respectively. I spoke a lot about this cardigan quite a few episodes ago, but you can probably find it on my channel if you look for the podcast episode where I'm wearing this cardigan in the thumbnail. And I also compared it to the other April cardigan that I've made, so you can see the changes that I made between the two. The only modification that I made to this cardigan is that I did a double knitted button band instead of the ribbed button band that's specified in the pattern. I really like the result and it's definitely one of my favourites. I just really like how these two pieces pair together. I love how you can see the cable at the top of the twist loop top just above the neckline of the cardigan and I like how the colours go together as well. Okay, since I've spoken quite a bit about both of these pieces in the past, I guess now I'll move on and talk about the big finished object that I've completed since the last video. This one was a piece that I had in progress when I did film the last episode. I think that in that episode I had half of the yoke and no collar, so a lot of progress has been made since and hopefully you can get a much better uh, idea of the vision I had for it now I have it just about finished. So I have been working on this jumper for the past few weeks. Um, it is a top-down raglan with this very simple colour work, just sort of one by one blue and white colour work, and corrugated ribbing around the cuffs and around the collar. I think I mentioned in the last episode, I did a sketch of this jumper um, probably almost a year ago and I got the yarn for it at the time, and then I never sat down and made it. So a few weeks ago I just decided to go for it, um, and I had quite a lot of fun making it I think. I'm an English style knitter and so this kind of colour work where you're alternating stitches all the time and you never get to do a bunch of stitches in a row of the same colour, it's a little bit tedious for me. Normally when I'm knitting colour work I will work a few stitches in one colour and then when I need to switch I put that colour down, pick up the other colour and keep knitting. This was driving me crazy when I was working on this one, um, it was just so slow and so painful to do. So I ended up switching halfway through the yoke to knit 200 colour work. So I was holding one of the colours continental and then knitting with the other colour English style. I can knit continental but it's a lot less comfortable for me than English knitting where I feel very comfortable doing it without looking um, and it just it hurts my hands the least I find which I know is a little bit of a controversial take. But I think the thing that I struggled the most with with the two-handed colour work is that my tension when I'm missing continental is very different to my tension when I'm missing English so it required quite a lot of concentration to make sure that I was uh, sort of maintaining the same tension between the two colours. Also for the corrugated ribbing sections um, in the collar and also the cuffs, I did go back to working with both colours English style. I don't feel as comfortable working two-handed colour work when I'm purling with one of the colours, um, so I just went back to doing it the way that I feel is the most comfortable. I was a little bit concerned that you'd be able to see on the yoke where I switched from doing English style colour work to two-handed colour work, but actually I don't think it's visible at all. I don't think it was even really visible before I blocked it out. 
The colour work does knit up at a tighter gauge, at least for me and the tension that I use when I'm knitting. Um, so I did have to go up the needle size to do the yoke and also to do this section on the cuffs. It kind of looks like a delicate um, <laughs> and quite thin jumper, but actually all of the stockinette is done on 4.5mm needles. The colour work is done on 5mm needles, so it's a relatively quickness overall. It is DK weight. So the yarn that I used for this, um, again, this is the Knitting for Olive Merino and the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. The main colour is soft blue, which I think I've mentioned before is probably my all-time favourite colour from Knitting for Olive. I've done a camisole in it, I've now done this in it, and I have, I think, two full skeins left, plus a little bit extra, so I will have to come up with something else to do. And then the contrast colour is just cream. I think it is just called cream. Knitting for Olive have, I think, about five different white yarns. They do have a post on their Instagram where they put them all next to each other so that you can see how they're subtly different. One is more white, one is more yellowish, one is more greyish, that kind of thing. I really do think that their colour selection is better than any other yarn brand, um, and I've never been sent any of their yarn for free or anything like that. It's just genuinely a yarn combination that I especially enjoy working with. Obviously, I haven't worn this that much yet, um, but I have uh, this cardigan, for example, many other pieces made of this exact yarn combination, and I do also find that it wears really beautifully. I think a lot of it is the mohair, but it doesn't really pill much at all. Um, the mohair does shed. My only, yeah, like, yeah, that is my only real complaint about the Knitting for Olive yarn. I find the mohair sheds quite a bit more than other mohairs that I've tried. It's relatively soft and much, much softer than, say, drops. Uh, pretty similar to Izzia, maybe a little bit less soft but it doesn't irritate me too much to wear around my neck. Obviously though, that's something that's going to vary a lot between different people, so I suppose you have to sort of try it to find out. The way that I constructed this jumper um, is I cast on underneath the collar here. I then uh, joined in the round and I worked short rows, so you can see there's a blue section above the collar work on the back, but not on the front, because the corrugated ribbon kind of meets the front collar work. And then I knitted to the yoke and body, and I picked up stitches for the collar afterwards. This was a decision that I made for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, I think it does help a little bit with uh, keeping the collar a nice shape. It is less likely to stretch out when there's a cast on edge in between the body and the collar, because that cast on edge has a little bit more structure than just stockinette. And so that part of the collar is going to stay in a little bit closer to the neck, um, rather than stretching out, and that's the look I wanted for this particular jumper. I'm sorry if the chair moved, the dog's are making a lot of noise, and I had to stop and deal with it. Where was I? The corrugated rib. So the things that make me a little bit wary of corrugated rib, and the reason why I decided to add it on afterwards rather than starting with it, um, well, firstly, it doesn't stretch as much. It has the floats in the back, so it's not as stretchy as regular rib, and so I was a little bit worried about getting it over my head. But also, it doesn't contract in the same way that regular rib does. So even if it does go over my head, um, I was worried that it might sit too far out from my neck. And I know I can put elastic in, um, and I might yet put elastic in it, but I wanted it to be the best possible fit overall. So I had to be quite precise with the amount of ease I wanted um, around the neck. And so since I wasn't sure how it would work, or if I wanted to give up on it and maybe just knit a single colored turtleneck or what, I decided to do the rest of the jumper first, see how it sits, and then try different neck options based on that until I found a way of doing it that I was satisfied with. As luck would have it though, um, my first attempt actually went fine. This goes over my head, but it is pretty snug once it's on, which is what I wanted. And I do think it looks really beautiful as well. I think it's nice though, because when other people are knitting this, everybody's going to have slightly different tension and do their colour work slightly differently, and so being able to try different neck options until you find one that looks good with the overall jumper, without having to rip back too much, or being worried you're going to drop stitches or whatever, is quite nice, and so I think I'm going to keep the pattern structured in this way. I was a little bit worried that doing it this way and picking up stitches would um, make this seam here a little bit awkward, um, but I'm happy enough with it after blocking. Another thing I was struggling a little bit with was getting the sleeves to keep their nice rectangular shape. Yeah, I had to change needle sizes quite a few times when I was working this cuff, um, going up a needle size to do the colour work, and then going down a needle size to do the corrugated rib. And these two rounds in between the two, um, I didn't change needle size again, I just carried on with the 5mm needle. But if I was to do this again, I think I would bother doing the 5mm, the 4.5mm for these two rounds, and then go down the needle size to do the ribbing. 
So if I were to have a pattern for this, which I think I probably will fairly soon, um, I will make sure to include that in it. Other than that, I'm really happy with it. The yoke shaping, it's a slightly modified raglan, so I think it sits really nicely around the arms. Um, and the fit overall, I really like. It's a little bit less oversized than some jumpers that I have, but it is still a very relaxed fit, and it's one that I'm very happy with. I wanted to finish this jumper to wear to an event, which I will talk a lot more about later on in the video, where I show you some of the new yarn and things that I have. And I did finish it in time, and so it's been worn once on a trip to London, um, and I felt very happy wearing it, <laughs> which is always a good sign, I think. Overall, this is a super successful project that's kind of been a long time in the making, and I'm really happy with the overall result. I am writing out the pattern at the moment, and I will probably do a call for testers over the next week or two. Okay, so on to the next finished object. As usual, I have a pair of socks. I actually finished this pair of socks a few weeks ago. Um, it's been quite a while since the last episode, I think, and I've been wearing these socks quite a bit, which is why they're not such a beautiful shape as they were right after I blocked them. I had these socks in a half-finished state in the last video, um, and I've now finished both of them. These are knitted from a pattern called Humu Humu by um, Yuka. I've obviously knitted a lot of Yuka socks before, you've probably seen them if you've watched this uh, channel. I really, really like the way that the patterns are structured and the way that they're explained. Um, I do generally prefer to knit socks cuff down. These are toe up. A lot of Yuga patterns, although not all, are toe up. But I feel like I'm getting more satisfied with how my top socks look as I make more of them. I've mentioned before my main complaint about top socks are, well, it's not that I dislike the process of knitting them. Um, I quite enjoy that. It's not worse than cuff down socks, at least. The two things I dislike about the final result of the sock um, firstly, I always find that the top edge flares out quite a lot. I was having trouble finding a bind off that works really well, um, that's stretchy enough for me to comfortably put on, but also that doesn't flare out. And also, um, just the edge of the heel flap. I always do socks with a heel flap and gusset. It's just my preferred fit, and I feel like um, slip stitch heel flaps wear well for me. But the very edge of the heel flap I don't think is as pretty as when I knit socks cuff down. Anyway, I tried a different bind off for this one. Um, maybe this is very obvious to those of you who frequently knit top socks and you could have told me a long time ago that this was a good one to try, but I've tried using the surprisingly stretchy bind off. I'm not sure I didn't go for it before. It's a bind off that I'm very familiar with because I use it for a lot of my jumpers and things. Generally when I'm knitting jumpers, uh, I always use an Italian bind off for one by one rib. I don't feel like tubular bind off is worth it for me, so I always just jump straight into doing a sewn bind off. But for 2x2 two two rib or anything unusual like that, I always use a surprisingly stretchy bind off. It's not invisible, um, it's definitely, it definitely has a certain look, but I quite like that look and it looks very uniform and nice. Actually, um, all of the bind offs in this jumper are surprisingly stretchy bind offs. I decided to do it on the top edge of the collar because I was a little bit worried about getting it over my head. And then to make everything else match, I also used it for the cuffs and the bottom of the body as well. So yes, this has a very interesting uh, rib at the top. The rib is designed to line up nicely with the cables on it, so it's not an even 2x2 two two rib or anything, and so it worked really well for maintaining that rib pattern in the bind off. Um, and it also flares out less than any of my other top socks. I think it looks really nice, and the flaring out issue uh, has pretty much been resolved, I think. I talk about it all the time, but for those of you who haven't watched one of my videos before, I'm on a mission to try out as many different sock yarns as I possibly can um, so that I can compare them and offer, I guess, some advice. Obviously I'm no authority on it, but I'd like to be able to suggest sock yarn to people. Um, so I haven't yet knit any two pairs of socks in the same yarn. For this pair, I used Regia Premium Merino Yak. I don't remember the shade name, but I will have it in the description along with all of the other yarn and the specific colours that I used that I mentioned in this video. It was on sale, so I have a feeling the colour may be discontinued as it was just this colour that I got on sale, um, but the yarn is really lovely and I do like it a lot. Obviously I'll have to wait and wear it a bit more to see how it wears, but I did really enjoy knitting with it. It's quite thick and very round and I think cables look really beautiful in it, even in this darker colour. I think I'll get up a little bit closer so you can see them because I'm far away and they are quite dark. The cables look like this, um, and the other side like this. I mentioned these things in the last episode, um, but in order for each episode to stand alone very well, this sock pattern is very well written and very clear. 
It only comes in one size, which I think is 58 stitches. I think I said it was 56 in the last video. That's wrong, it is 58. Since it is quite a small stitch count and there are no variations possible, um, I did end up knitting it on 2.5mm needles. I normally knit all of my socks on 2.25mm needles in the hope that they'll wear a little bit better. I was worried that it wouldn't fit, but actually they fit really well. I'm really satisfied with the result. My favourite thing about the cables is, well, two favourite things. Um, firstly, they all fit nicely into a multiple of eight rows. So it's not one of those patterns where you have to keep track with which row you're on on different cable charts. It is just a single eight row repeat. Uh, so it's really easy to memorize and keep track of and you don't have to worry about missing sort of cable twists. The other thing I like about it is that each sock on its own is asymmetric, but the pair are mirror images of each other, if that makes any sense. I think it's really cool and it's inspired me to work on another project, which I will speak about more when I talk about yarn I've got and what I plan to do with it. Overall, I think it's a beautiful pair of socks, and um, as long as you're not too put off by any of the things I said about it being single size or maybe requiring slightly larger needles, I very much recommend it. These socks have just been one of my favourite pairs lately. Okay, so I'm going to move on to my first work in progress. I think I showed this yarn in the last video um, as a new yarn that I picked up. After making that dress that I finished recently, um, I wanted to try and use some more yarn from Izia or Izaga because I really, really liked the yarn for the dress. And so I bought a few skeins of this. This is Mary Lynn. I think it's 80% merino and 20% linen. Um, I may be wrong about that. But I really liked the look of it because I do enjoy summery looking garments, but I don't like working with plant fiber very much. It's obviously something that is very subjective, but I find cotton is quite uncomfortable to knit with. I don't love the look of it, and I don't really like how it stretches out afterwards. Since I live in the UK and touch wood, it doesn't get too hot most of the time to wear a merino camisole. I normally just stick to knitting with a non-superwash merino fingering weight yarn to make camisoles. But I was quite drawn to this because the 20% linen gives us a little bit more of a plant fibery look while it still behaves like wool. I'm missing with one strand of it on 3mm needles, and I am enjoying working with it. It's a tiny bit splitty, um, if that's something that bothers you, and it does have these sort of linen or planty fibres in it, which I think some people will probably pick out, but I've just been knitting into my piece without worrying about them too much. I'll get up a little closer so you can maybe see some more of the texture. I don't know if any of that is visible, if you can see any of the little strands coming off it or anything like that. In terms of what I'm making, uh, the plan is for this to be a camisole. This is, I guess, my first summer knit of the year. It's still very cold and cloudy, but it will be nice to have it done early and ready to wear. I am knitting it bottom up for a number of reasons. I'm generally quite anti bottom up garments because I don't like the fact that you might run out of yarn or if you want to use up every bit of yarn, it's a lot harder to do that when you're working bottom up. I also find it's harder to judge the length of the garment because when you try it on, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly where it's going to sit, and so the length is easy to misjudge. However, for this particular piece, I do quite like the idea of working it bottom up. When I'm working on camisoles, I notice that a lot of the top-down patterns that I've made, and I've made quite a lot of similar ribbed camisole type pieces, it always starts off by making lots of little triangles or little strips, and then you sort of assemble them all into one piece. And I'm actually not sure that I enjoy that the most. I feel like the bottom-up camisole knitting process is a little bit more streamlined. The other really major factor, and I guess the, the primary reason why I wanted to knit this bottom-up, is because with a lot of the bralettes and camisoles that I've made, um, especially if they're worked top-down, it's a lot harder to go back and change the length of the straps. The straps tend to stretch out, and it's a little hard to figure out how much they're going to stretch out, and so they can definitely end up being too loose or too tight, um, and that's really annoying. So I think that from, from working it bottom up like this, the straps will be the last part that I do, and so I'll be able to seam them, try it on, you know, check that it really sits how I want it to, um, and then I can do I-cord edges or whatever. And even if I end up having it stretch out over time and I want to make changes, it should be really easy to make those adjustments and then seam it back together again. I'm not following any particular pattern for this, um, I'm just making it up as I go along. I want it to be halter neck ribbed camisole, um, and I think what I might also do is make a version of the bralette where instead of having waist decreases like this one does, um, I might just have an elastic band which is sort of covered by the ribbing. 
so I may end up making a second one. Obviously all of that is dependent on how it turns out and how much I like it. Um, it looks extremely tiny right now, but that's typical of camisoles. I am fairly sure it's going to fit me. And I've knitted this much and I've just barely started the second skein, so I don't think it'll be using up too much yarn either. I feel like last year I knitted quite a lot of very bra-friendly camisoles, and so it's quite nice to knit one that's slightly less practical than bra-friendly for once. I don't know, maybe I will miss a nice halter neck bralette to wear with it. As usual, I do have a pair of socks on the go. I've been on a little bit of a sock knitting kick recently, and I've been reaching for my socks more than usual, so I'm actually quite a long way through this pair. Uh, I already have one finished sock, and I have made good progress on the second. I'm about to start the heel flap and the cuff down. I had this blue yarn from Opal. As I said, I'm wanting to try a wide variety of sock yarns, and I had this Opal yarn and wanted to use it, but the colour is a lot more vibrant than the colours I normally choose. I thought it might be nice to try and use some other scrap sock yarn that I had as well to create a sock that's not quite as blue overall. Obviously this foot section is still very blue, but I do think that these other sections tone it down a little bit. This is another pattern by Yuka. The pattern is called Kiyi. It features this really beautiful quilted section at the top and then a contrast cuff. And then there are slip stitches along the top of the foot as well. All the yarn colours will be in the description as usual. Um, as I said, this main blue yarn is opal. I've been meaning to use it for a while because I think it is the sort of sock yarn I like. A very basic, pretty sturdy wool nylon blend. And then I believe the white that I use, not that it especially matters, any cream sock yarn will look exactly the same. I think it's Drops Fable though, and this uh, bluey grey that I've used for the cuff is the Cascade Heritage Solids, which is a merino nylon blend, and it's the yarn I used to knit the juniper socks that I think I showed in the last episode. Overall, I think it's a really cute sock. It is knitted cuff down mostly, which I appreciate. You go back and add this little cuff one at the end, so I guess the top cuff is worked uh, bottom up. But as I said, I figured out a bind off that I think gives a much prettier finish, and so I'm much more okay with that than I would be before I figured out a bind off that works really well. The heel flap is twisted broken rib, I suppose. I think it looks quite nice, and from past experience, the twisted rib heel flaps that I have on pairs of socks that I've worn a lot seem to have worn pretty well. So I have high expectations for the wear of this sock, and the colour is definitely not necessarily what I'd go for, but I'm happy with it overall. Here is the second one that I have on the needles. I've just finished um, doing the quilted section with the white, so now I can just work with the blue, and I'm about to start on the heel flap. For this, I have knitted the third size, I believe there are four sizes in total, and I've used 2.5mm needles for the quilted section at the top, and then I switched to use my 2.25mm needles for the foot. I use Chiaogu's for socks all the time. I'm a big fan of bamboo needles, but when they're so tiny, 2.25 or 2.5mm, it makes me a little bit nervous because I'm worried I'm going to snap them. But I don't have 2.5mm metal Chiaogu's, um, so I did end up using my interchangeable CNET needles. Although I have got the Chiaogu's, which I'll show you in a second, which I will use in the future. So yes. This is a lot of fun, I've enjoyed the pattern, I do recommend this, it is very clear. But I look forward to knitting some neutral socks next, I think. Okay, so that is it for projects that I've completed and that I'm currently working on. There have been three events lately that have caused me to obtain a lot more yarn than I usually would. I guess a sort of a little bit of a disclaimer, um, this is a lot of yarn and it's definitely not a quantity that I buy on a monthly basis. I always feel a little bit strange about how these videos kind of constantly show new things and sort of pressure people, perhaps, to buy more than they otherwise would. In general, I feel like I want to buy less yarn and instead focus on buying yarn that I really love, that I feel like comes from good companies, and that I'm going to really enjoy wearing as well. In the past, I've knitted mostly with Drops Yarn because it was the best that I could afford, but now that I'm doing YouTube and I can make a little bit of money back from showing my knitting to you guys, it does allow me to buy yarn that I'm a little bit more excited about from brands that I really enjoy working with, and so I'm excited to share some of this yarn with you. Also, some of this yarn, I believe two of the garments worth of yarn, um, I did get for free. I will make it very clear when I get to it which yarn that is and explain why I got it as well. So, I'll talk about the most recent uh, yarn that I got first. As of filming, I got all of this yesterday, so it's very fresh in my mind and still very exciting. 
So Valentina, who is a knitter on Instagram, who goes by My Ivory Room, has recently opened a yarn shop and sort of event space, I think. There was a launch party for it yesterday and I ended up deciding to go. It wasn't an invitation only thing, um, anyone could go and I'm really glad I did, I had a really lovely time. I got to go and look at all of the yarn they had in stock and there was some really nice food and I got to meet a lot of people who I follow on Instagram but I've never met in person before. And it was just nice to chat to knitting people about yarn and knitting. So I did buy a, a few things. Everything in this bag I bought myself and I have to say, I think the selection of yarn that they had at that shop was exceptionally well aligned with my taste. Uh, not just yarn actually, I think the best example of it is, as I mentioned earlier in the video and I've definitely said before on this channel, when it comes to knitting needles I knit everything on this one set of interchangeable sea knits that I have. It was very expensive, I bought them a few years ago now and I've never really bought any other needles since with the exception of Chow Goose for knitting socks because I get nervous knitting socks on really thin bamboo needles. So of course the only needles that they stocked at the shop were uh, wooden sea knits and the metal fixed Chow Goose that I love so much. And they had all of the accessories for the sea knit kits, um, for the interchangeable sets, which made me so happy because I really like the idea that if I break a piece of my set or if I lose a needle or whatever, I don't have to replace it, I can just go buy a replacement for that one piece and keep everything else. But it's often quite tricky to find some of the pieces for the sea knit set um, in the UK individually and I have to say the selection of pieces was great. So what I ended up getting was firstly a 2.5mm 80cm fixed circular chow goose. These are for socks, I knit all of my socks with magic loop. I have these in the 2.25mm version and I knit all of my socks on them but having had to use the 2.5mm sea knits both for the Humu Humu cabled socks and also for the Kiki socks with the quilting at the top. Um, I, I've been really wanting to get another pair of the Chiao Gu's in the 2.5mm versions, but I don't have to do that. So I think buying this pair is very well justified and I know that I'm going to love them because I already have them a quarter of a millimetre size down and I use them all the time. I've been using a really cheap cable needle from Pony. Um, I don't use cable needles that often, I don't use them for socks or anything, I just sort of drop the stitches and hope for the best. But I do sometimes enjoy working with them for bigger cables and I do have a cable project planned. I had the cheap little pony cable needle and you know sometimes you have interchangeable needles where you have to use a pin to insert it into the needle to detach the needle from the cable? I had this on a really old drop set that I had before the sea nets and I was going back to an old project which had the drops needles still in it and I wanted to remove the needles from the cable but I'd lost the little pin so instead very stupidly. I just shoved my smallest cable needle into the little hole in the needle and attempted to use that to sort of lever the needle and cable apart and of course the end of my cable needle just bent at a 90 degree angle so it's been a real pain to use. So when I saw the cable needles that match my interchangeable CNET set I was really excited about it and had to pick them up. Something about my needle set having a lot of matching pieces, I have the matching needle to weave my ends, I have the knitting needles, I have a matching crochet hook and now I have the cable needle too, it's very satisfying to me. I really can't say enough good things about the CNET interchangeable needle set, it is my absolute favourite and I do recommend it to anyone who has enough money to buy a slightly more luxurious, I suppose, needle set. Okay, so that's it for accessories and I'll move on to talk about the yarn I picked up. Firstly, I got a ball of sock yarn. This is Kremka Solwool Edelweiss, which I think I actually spoke about in the last video. I said I don't like to use the same yarn for socks more than once most of the time, and I haven't actually used the previous ball of this that I bought, but I was so excited to see it in all of the colours in person, um, and this cream was so pretty that I really wanted to pick it up. I already have a ball in a dark grey, which I'm excited to use. I mentioned in the last video that what made me so excited about this sock yarn is firstly that it is non-superwash, I prefer the look and feel of non-superwash yarn and also I prefer, if I don't know how that superwash has been manufactured, to try and get non-superwash instead because it is slightly more environmental. Not that I'm going to come for anybody for painstakingly making their own socks that take weeks instead of buying them from a shop, uh, superwash or not, I'm sure that's a good thing for the environment. But also the nylon in this is made from recycled plastic bottles. I have not had a great experience with sock yarns with no nylon in so far. I made a pair with Retro Zari and Mondim and they lasted about four wears before I got a big hole in them. So I am trying to find sort of non-superwash sock yarns which do still have nylon. 
I think people who are concerned about using superwash are also often concerned about nylon and try to avoid them both. So this is quite rare. It's also extremely cheap. This was about six or seven pounds, I think. That's cheaper than pretty much any sock yarn I've tried other than drops. So it's a really great deal. And it does mostly come in quite vibrant colors, but this is really pretty. And there were some other lovely neutrals as well. It was just so exciting to see them all laid out in a shop because they're not super widely available in the UK and I don't get to see them very often. Actually, I think that's the case for a lot of the yarn at my ivory room. Most of it is yarn that I haven't really seen at other shops or is quite tricky to find within the UK. So it felt really good to look at it and touch it and see what it was all like. The next thing that I bought, and this is a treat. This was yarn that I picked it up and I squished it. And I was like, well, I would really like that. And I looked at the price and I was like, mm, maybe not. Um, and in the end, I did end up getting it. This is Safira from Pasquale Filati Naturali. I'm afraid I am monolingual and don't pronounce things very well. It's a merino and silk blend, 75% wool and 25% silk. What made me decide to pick these up, other than the fact they are extremely soft, um, is the colour. I feel like you're probably not going to be able to see it very well on camera, but this one that kind of looks black or grey, is actually a really muted olive green. It's sort of a colour where you look at it and you go, is that green? Like, or is that not green? It's barely green, but it is olive green. And then this is a, I think it was called taupe, but it's a um, really pretty greenish grey. So the two of them are both super desaturated greyish greens, and they're both really unique colours, but they look so beautiful together as well. Since it's 25% silk and 75% merino, that's sort of the perfect uh, fibre combination for an ideal summer yarn for me. And so I really wanted to make a summer piece out of it. I thought that it would look amazing with stripes. And so I really want to do something striped with these two. Maybe a striped t-shirt or something. Um, and it's a project that I will be looking forward to working on in the summer. I always put off knitting a striped t-shirt because I really want to make one, but I especially want to make it more of a drop shoulder, like I don't think I want a raglan or a round yoke, and yet getting stripes to work to get them to match up or look nice with short row shaping in the top of the sleeve is something I'm a little bit nervous about. It's a challenge I feel like I have to just jump into, um, but it's definitely something that I've thought quite a bit about and worried that I wouldn't be able to achieve in a way that I'm satisfied with. But I'm going to give it a go and this is the kind of yarn that will make it, I think, a really lovely processed knit as well, and I'm excited to use it. The last yarn that I bought for myself, you may be looking at this and thinking that isn't a very Florence colour. It's in a really crinkly plastic bag, so I'm going to move this so it stops crinkling while I'm talking. So I am going to a May ball in June. I know, funny, kind of misnamed, but they're all in June. I'm going to the St John's College May ball, which I also went to last year. Last year I decided about 24 hours before the ball that I wanted to wear a shawl with my dress. And so I, I think I have spoken briefly about this on this channel before. I had to use whatever yarn was in my room, which happened to be about five balls of Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair in cream. And then I knitted and blocked a shawl within 24 hours to wear to the ball. It was a lovely shawl, which I was quite happy with. Um, I will link the pattern as well as the yarn in the description. I'll try to remember. But it was a very stressful experience, and I didn't get very much sleep that night, which wasn't great considering the ball is an all-night event. I recently bought a dress to wear to the ball this year, and it's a mauvey purple colour. It's very pretty, but it's not a very Florence colour at all, and I wanted to knit something to wear with it in good time this year, but I also didn't want to knit something mauvey purple because I feel like I'm just not going to wear it. Some of the details on the dress are a really dark, almost black kind of navy blue colour, and I figured that is a colour that I'm much more likely to reach for. So when I saw these in the shop, I just thought immediately of this dress that I bought pretty recently and how well they would match. It does probably look black on camera, but it's definitely a really dark navy blue. I think the colour is called Midnight, yes. So these are from Marjo Garn. I've seen a lot of their yarn on Instagram, but again, I've never seen it in person in a shop before until I went to my every room. They didn't have all the colours, but they had maybe 10-ish. A lot of bright colours, but a couple of neutrals, and this amazing dark blue as well. The merino is very soft, I really like the feel of it, and the mohair seems really lovely as well, so I'm very excited to make something with these. To be honest, I don't know especially what I want to make, beyond the fact a cardigan to match my dress. I'll have to think more about what specific design features I'd like to use. 
So I think I just made sure I had enough to make a cardigan of each of these and I'm really excited to knit something up. I don't love working with dark colours but this will be a one-off. It's definitely a product knit rather than a progress knit. I'm looking forward to have something beautiful to wear over my dress that matches it really well rather than necessarily knitting with an almost black colour for a long time. Okay, so I said I'd make it very clear when I have yarn that I did not pay for and everything in this bag that I'm about to show you I was given. I was given it because I have been asked to make a pattern or a couple of patterns for the shop that can be sold by the shop um, and so I was really looking around and thinking about what I wanted to design. I had quite a lot of freedom to sort of do what I wanted. There was a lot of yarn from BC Garn and it is really beautiful. The colours were amazing, there were a lot that were sort of like one ply that's a light colour and one ply dark colour applied together. I know nothing about spinning, <laughs> I'm sorry I can't give you a better description. I've seen them a lot online, again, never seen them in person in a store before and I was really drawn to them but I ended up going with this cream. It's a cream with a couple of really tiny black fibres throughout it which I think gives a really lovely look. This is Samila Pura. I don't think it has a colour code on it. Oh, it's just colour number one. I think it's a DK weight or like a slightly light DK weight and it's 100% wool. To hold with it, I got some more of the Marjo Gun Pearl Mohair, just in a cream colour. This is called Ivory. And my plan for these is that I really want to make a cable jumper. When I was working on those socks, the Humu Humu socks, um, I really liked how the asymmetric cables looked and so I really want to do a quite traditional cabled jumper but have the cables be asymmetric. I don't know if it's necessarily the most original idea but I can't get it out of my head and so I'm going to make it happen. A nice cable jumper with some squiggles on it and a big cable off centre or something like that. It's definitely going to be a little bit of a challenge for me, um, it's something I'm really looking forward to and I just can't wait to work with this yarn, I think it's beautiful. So yes, these two I received to work on a pattern for the shop. That was everything from my every room. So I'll move on to talking about the second event that happened, which caused me to buy a lot more yarn than usual this month. As I'm sure you can tell, even if you've never seen one of my videos before, from how frequently I've talked about it and the projects I've done using it throughout this video, I'm a really big fan of yarn from Knitting for Olive. I think it's really beautiful quality, the prices are quite reasonable, the colour selection is amazing and it seems to be really thoughtfully created. They don't really do sales, but approximately once a year, I don't think it's scheduled, but it seems to happen about yearly. They do a charity day where all of their sales from that day end up being donated to a charity. They had one of these a few weeks ago. I believe it all went to the Danish Red Cross, um, I think to use in Ukraine. So the money spent on their website does end up being donated to charity and so it's a good day to buy yarn if you're planning on buying it anyway. I use yarn from Knitting for Olive pretty frequently so it made sense for me to pick up a few different balls of yarn to try out. So I bought a couple different things. First of all I bought I think two or potentially three balls of this. This is the Pure Silk from Knitting for Olive, it's in the colour Lamb's Ears. I said before that I don't like working with plant fibre, um, obviously this isn't a plant fibre but it behaves pretty similarly to one in general. I've used it to make a summer top before, I have a t-shirt, I think it's the Petite Knit Anchor Tee, um, which I've knitted up in this yarn in a cream colour and I actually really like the finished result. Perhaps it's not my favourite knitting experience but I quite like the uneven look you get at the end um, and so I would be happy to try it again. I think it suits certain kinds of designs, I wouldn't necessarily use it for a ribbed camisole because it will always have a bit more of an uneven finish, but I think for example I've seen broken rib that I think it might look really pretty for, um, or anything in stockinette, and definitely looser fitting garments. So it doesn't matter so much if it does stretch out and lose its shape a little bit. So yes, I got two or possibly three of these, I'm not too sure, it knits up nicely on a 3mm needle and so that's my plan for this one. I picked up some blue silk mohair. I think I showed one or two episodes ago. I got some Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo. They actually had quite a lot of it in my every room, um, but I didn't get any because I said I picked some up a few months ago. I got it in a blue colour and I don't love how it knits up without mohair. It's quite uneven and it's also single ply, which is something I don't love. I think it will wear okay because it does have mohair and silk in it, but I just don't love the look of it. 
but I think with mohair it's really pretty. I've used it with mohair before to make a jumper in, so I knew that I wanted some mohair to pair with this Nora yarn, even if I'm not going to knit it up immediately. And so since there was this charity event, I ended up buying Missing for Olive mohair in the shade Dusty Dove Blue. I believe I saw a Ravelry project, I think it was a Petite Knit Terrazzo sweater, that used the same colour of the Silk Garden Soxola that I bought, and this was the mohair that they paired with it. It looked really lovely, so I think it will match nicely. It's a really pretty colour, um, not too saturated, a lovely mid-blue, I really do like it a lot. It's the kind of colour I'd love to have a full garment in at some point, but not now. The final thing that I got from the Knitting for Olive charity sale day, there is this one particular shade of green that Knitting for Olive make called Fennel Seed. I used it two summers ago to make a camisole, I think it was camisole number five by My Favourite Things Knitwear. I've worn that camisole so much, it's one of my all-time favourite knits, and I think the colour is just gorgeous. It pairs so beautifully with like cream jeans or cream shorts or uh, that kind of colour combination I really, really enjoy. So for a long time I've been wanting to make a jumper just using this fennel seed colour, um, and I haven't found any especially similar colours that other brands do. I think Sandless Gun have one which is a similar yellowy green shade, but it's really hard to find in the UK. So I kind of knew this was going to happen eventually, but I ended up getting a, just about, maybe, a sweater quantity of this fennel seed colour. This is the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino. I've made quite a few pieces with this yarn, I enjoy it a lot. It's not as soft as their regular merino, but it's a worsted weight, it knits up really quickly, um, and it wears quite well, I find. And then I also got silk mohair to hold with it. I think I went for a thousand metres, so that's probably about eight of these. I'm trying to do mental math. I think it is eight. And then five of these, perhaps. So perhaps I'm a little bit restricted on what I can do with a thousand metres, but this will be knitted up at a fairly large gauge, so I think it should be fine. I should be able to do something quite oversized. I was really envisioning knitting up a half fisherman's rib jacket, maybe a zip up one, but since that will use up perhaps a little more yarn than usual, I'm not sure if this will be the best yarn for that. I just think it would be so lovely in this colour to wear with a white t-shirt underneath or something like that. The shade is just so unique and it's exactly the sort of colour I love to wear, so I'm sure that whatever I make will be a piece that I'm going to reach for all the time. Guessing a little bit silly, but I have one more yarn that I got, and this was the third and final event that caused me to have more yarn this month. Again, as I said, I will make it clear when I am giving yarn for free, and this was sent to me for free. I tested a dress for Ullen Knitwear on Instagram last month. It was a mini dress with cables on it. Um, I, I think the Instagram post did quite well, so I'm sure you guys do really like it. And I used some yarn which was sent to me from Izzy after that. Ullen Knitwear posted a picture of a bralette that was really, really cute, and it's knitted up with DK weight yarn, so it should be a really quick knit. I was asked to test knit it, and so uh, I agreed, and I was sent the yarn for it for free. So I have two skeins of this, it's the uh, Eco Baby, and I have the shade E2S, which is a really pale creamy grey. I anticipate this will be a really speedy project, I'm looking forward to test knitting it, um, and also wearing it, I feel like it's the kind of piece I just reach for a lot. This is a Baby Alpaca and Cotton blend, it's chainette, so it's quite an unusual yarn, um, and I've never used it before, but I'm excited to try it out. I always mix it up with the other Izzy yarn that I think was released around the same time, which also just comes in sort of natural colourways, I think it's called Eco Soft. But yes, this is the chainette one, not the more blow yarn looking one, um, and it is the DK weight. So yes, I think that's it for today. I know that that was a completely unreasonable amount of yarn to show, and hopefully I won't be buying any more for quite a long time while I work through all of this. I think ultimately it's just really nice to have so many projects that I'm looking forward to working on over the summer, especially once I've got my dissertation done, and hopefully graduating, I will have a little bit more time to knit for a while. But I will be back here soon, in a couple of weeks probably, with another video where I can show you some more of the stuff that I've been working on, um, and I will look forward to filming that. Thanks very much for watching and goodbye.